Ryan, tell me a little bit about actually feeding the plants with the water. Right, well, the, you know, as I talked about the recipe here that's mixed in this thousand gallon tank, and then the pump pumps it all the way uphill, uh, with, you know, the greenhouse is situated uphill about 1.5% about, uh, grade. It's pumped all the way up, it then returns by gravity, and whatever's not used by the plant uh, comes back to the tank, and it's remixed accordingly to get the proper pH and, uh, and nutrients. Um, so there's a constant flow. This, this white noise of the pump is 24-7. Um, we have a backup pump, we have a generator. If we lose electricity, right. it needs to always be running. Right. Even an hour in sunny July would mm -hmm. be very, very disastrous if, if the pump is off. I can imagine. Yeah. Ryan, this is really interesting. Is this, what are these baffles? Yeah, this is our cooling wall and uh, it serves, it's evaporative cooling. So this wall is wet. There's a, a sump pump down here at the end that's constantly pumping up water, which then trickles down and out behind this uh, baffle is an open open door. Mm -hmm. And those big fans at the north end are uh -huh. sucking the air through. To draw the air through. Drawing the air through, yeah. Wow. So this, it serves to cool, mm -hmm. but also serves to add some humidity on dry days. Sure, right. sure. And while we're on the humidity, what yeah. are these tubes that keep inflating yeah. randomly, it seems? Yeah, there's a big jet fan at, uh -huh. you know, under each, under each uh, and there, and depending on the time of year, it runs pretty much evenly all, to, all the time in the winter when it's it's distributing the heat and making it have a, a, an even level of heat. Basically, it's, it's just evening the moisture and the humidity and the temperature in the whole greenhouse. It helps distribute an even, even flow. Now, Ryan, as we were coming in, we actually came through two doors. Right. Why, why was that? Right, well, the first door we came in from the, out, from the outside has an air curtain like okay. you would find in a grocery store or something. Uh, it's to, to blow any bugs off and ah. keep the bugs out as you're, okay. as you're coming in. Um, and then you come in this door and that, that, you know, that we call it the head house. Um, some people would choose to change their clothes if they're coming from a field or something. So that, that room just serves as, you know, you're changing environments from the outside environment mm -hmm. to the inside environment. I see. Well, so just because you're growing in a greenhouse doesn't necessarily mean you don't have pests. So what, what, sort of, what sort of pests do you battle in the greenhouse? Um, you know, right now it's a pest. Uh, we have algae gnats. They're not going to hurt. You know, they're, they're a pain in the net uh, if they get to be alive. <laughs> Most nets are. Plant. Yeah. Um, so oh, that, that, that battle is just keeping dry, keeping puddles dry, not letting algae mm -hmm. build up. So um, that, that's not a serious pest. Last year we, we had aphids, which love romaine and uh. baby bok choy. Um, you know, in that event, we would get uh, beneficial insects. Mm -hmm. uh, it was some kind of wasp larva. Sure. That you just sprinkle, and they eat the, they eat the, the baby uh, aphids. Um, but really, we, we only did that once. And our other thing is to just keep keep it very clean. You know, we, mm -hmm. we sterilize the channels, wipe them out. It looks very so, clean. Yeah. 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 This is not a tomato tree, but it looks like it, doesn't it? Ryan, how long ago did you plant this? We planted these seeds about December 4th or 5th of last year. So six months ago. Right. All right, let's take a look down here. This is really neat. So this is a hydroponic tomato. Right. Tell us what's different about this system from the lettuces that we just took a look at. Right. Well, the lettuce grows in channels. Um, it has a constant flow of nutrients. The tomatoes grow in a bucket, and they don't use rock. We do plant the seed in rock wool, but then inside this bucket is uh, what's called perlite, which is that white stuff that's yes. in potting soil. Yeah. Um, so the roots are growing in that bucket in the perlite. Now, they're fed, uh, the nutrients are mixed, and we have the acid to lower the pH. Everything's sort of this is similar there, but they don't get a constant flow. Every 20 minutes during daylight, you know, dawn to dusk, they get fed every 20 minutes, um, according to how hot and dry it is, the air is. So it might be two minutes, it might be two and a half minutes, but each plant gets their own little feed tube and the nutrients just trickle down, uh, you know, like I said, every 20 minutes. This is fascinating. So you'll replant these tomatoes in December. Right. So the yeah. yeah, at the end of the year, you know, we'll decide to tear them out. If the winter is pretty hot, hard and quick, you know, we don't want to spend money on heating because we don't have a lot of tomatoes in December. So when we tear this out, all these vines have to come out. It's a lot of work. It's weeks of work. Yeah. Um, then we got to sterilize the house, get rid of any kind of fungus that was present, and uh, 
you know, dump the buckets of Paralyte out, get new Paralyte loaded in there. So it's, it's a lot of, it was, last December was our first December with tomatoes, and it was a lot of work to transition from one year to the next. Sure, sure. Well, it is a year-round operation. Right. What, tell us about the production that you get from yeah. season to season. You know, right. does it slow? Can it slow? I mean, you can yeah. control all that, right? Right. Well, one thing we don't control is we don't have grow lights. So you're going to get an increasing amount of grow lights up to about this time of year when we're at you know, the longest days of the year. Sure. So we do see, you know, we get maybe 4% of our tomatoes in March, but we get, you know, 20% of our tomatoes in June and 22% in July, you know. We get right. a lot of them in the summer, just like, you know, you can get a, we grow tomatoes in, outside of the summer. Right. But we, but we do grow, you know, 30% of our crop when nobody else is growing tomatoes at right. all. Right, you know, except right. Except in Florida and Mexico. Right. Places like that. That was great. Thank you so much for You're the time, welcome. Ryan. Now you've got some deliveries to make? I do. All right, get to it. <laughs> <laughs> that was fascinating to learn about hydroponics at Butter Valley. Here, babe, why don't you take this in and give it a rinse for me, okay? Looks like it's fresh salad for lunch, homegrown on a hobby farm. We'll see you next time. Hey, wake up. <laughs>